Greetings and welcome to this uh, online video of um, integrating Flex and Zen Framework. We'll be taking a look at that in just a moment, but before we do, I actually want to uh, introduce you to a friend of mine. Uh, this is a guy called Little Trade. Um, he's, uh, I don't know, kind of a person who uh, sits kind of over my shoulder and whispers weird things into my head. If you kind of think of him, he's kind of like the, uh, kind of like the Great Kazoo from the... Uh, from the Flintstones cartoons, except there's one major difference in that he's actually real. Um, I actually have proof of this. Um, last year at ZenCon, we had a meet the team night, and actually if we look at uh, this photo, we can clearly see Little Shrade hovering over my shoulder. Um, he was getting a pretty good laugh at that. He's, I mean, he's kind of an inquisitive little fellow. Um, he's, you know, learning a lot about, uh, you know, technology and things like that. Clearly he's wearing a spacesuit, so that's uh, something that's probably important to him. Um, but, you know, like I said, he's a little bit inquisitive, and so <laughs> he was wondering what that flash was, so I came up to the screen here and just had to kind of, you know, check and see what was going on, but uh, not realizing that that was probably a bad form, that he probably shouldn't be doing that. Um, he's also a little bit of a funny guy. Basically, what he said here was he was trying to get me to, you know, <laughs> uh, look, stare intently at Stoss and see if we could get him to blink. I don't think that it actually worked, but, uh, um, you know, we gave it a pretty good shot at it. And just in case you think that it's uh, just me that uh, Little Charade hangs around, it's not entirely true. Um, we can see here, this was actually recorded, I and mean, this was live at ZenCon 09, um, where Master Eli was uh, trying to trying to give his uh, presentation uh, at the start of the uh, conference. Um, but of course, Little Charade, you know, having a little bit of a mean streak in, in him, I suppose, um, you know, went and found a stormtrooper of all things and uh, tried to take Eli out, but uh, you know, it didn't work so well because you know Eli is uh, you know master level, and so he's uh, he was able to quite easily, actually not even looking at it, uh, able to deflect that blow that was coming in. Um, like I said, um, little trades a little bit of a stinker too, so he you know went and uh, made uh, some changes to the presentation, but uh, you know nobody really seemed to matter about that. Uh, or really seem to care about that, or, or it, did, it didn't really make the news. I was, I was actually kind of surprised about that. But uh, um, either way, what Little Shrade has is a question. He wants to know what's up with PHP and Flash. Um, and so that's what we're going to look at here. Um, if you're looking at this, there are two different perspectives you can look at this from. Uh, one of them would be the PHP side. The other could be the Flash side. So we're looking at this now from the Flash side. And the question is, why would you use PHP as a Flash developer to build your rich internet application? Um, here are a couple of reasons for you. you know, some of them may be important, some, one, some of them may not. But basically, PHP has been all about rapid application development basically from the start. And um, there have been really good rapid, rapid application uh, development or uh, libraries available for about the past seven or eight years or so. Um, but PHP is all about building... Um, uh, you know, rapid applications or building an application quickly, easy, getting it deployed, getting it out, out and running, set, and uh, such things. Uh, you have loose typing for scalar types, so these are things like uh, strings, integers, uh, booleans, basically data that's coming from your browser. Um, that's one of the reasons why you don't have uh, strong typing for those scalar types of variables is because um, when they come in from a browser, they're text. So it's very much a natural fit between what's coming from a browser and uh, what your application needs. But if you do need some kind of structure in your application, uh, you can build that structure in using the object-oriented programming mechanisms uh, that are in PHP. It's got a full OO complement of uh, features, and so you can use that to uh, uh, build, out your, build out your application structure. There are millions of, of programmers who are available worldwide to do PHP work. Um, PHP is uh, one of the fastest growing programming languages in the enterprise. Um, you know, rather than going towards you know, uh, more highly structured applications or more highly structured frameworks, um, a lot of enterprises are going the PHP route because it gives them a lot of flexibility and gives them quick turnaround time and it's very easy to program in. Um, so a lot of uh, uh, organizations are going that route. Also provides a mechanism for multi-content delivery. And what that, that means is that, uh, say you don't have um, a platform where you can deploy Flash, you can still deploy in HTML and still build it in PHP. Um, if you want to have uh, you know, SOAP integration, that's all available there too. Uh, so you can you know, build out an application without too much, uh, 
too much worry about whether or not you're going to actually be able to um, serve the content that you're looking for. Um, there's gobs of examples out there on the web that you can go from, uh, go and build your application from. Um, very many of them are not so great. Some of them are really good. Um, you'll pro and you'd probably be able to learn after you know, just a short period of time which ones are the actual uh, good ones. Um, there's a very short learning curve, and the thing that might get you is that uh, you might already be using it. Um, it wouldn't be the first time that somebody found out that they were using PHP in their organization um, to uh, you know do some kind of build some kind of functionality that you have uh, that's that's needed for uh, for some kind of a uh, you know, company or uh, individual group within a company or within an uh, organization. Um, just because it is so simple to build and so simple to deploy, there's actually a pretty good chance that you might already be using it. So from the PHP side, the question would be, why would you use Flash? Um, one of them, one of the reasons would be very rich interactivity. That doesn't you know, surprise anybody. I mean, you look at the various recording artists and movie trailer sites out there, and a lot of them are done using Flash. Um, but one of the things I really like about Flash is that it gives you accurate UI design. In other words, you don't have to worry about dealing with any kind of um, you know, CSS black magic or anything like that. Um, you know, CSS obviously is something that definitely improves upon um, the you know, original HTML, giving you much better control. But there still is a little bit of black magic involved in that you know, not all browsers support it exactly the same way, and so on and so forth. So um, being able to specifically work with one standard is actually uh, quite nice. And all, obviously it's flashy. Um, you can do really cool things with it. Um, and this next point, I guess, is a little bit, uh, a little bit controversial when saying that it's more natural for uh, rich internet applications than HTML is. Um, HTML and JavaScript are definitely very useful, and I would would probably argue that have they have uh, more pertinence at, in the web at large. But if you're looking to build a rich internet application that is very, uh, very highly structured, um, uh, very, very easy to use, uh, a little bit more close to a uh, desktop application experience, um, which is what a lot of the HTML and JavaScript um, uh, libraries are trying to do is to actually mimic the desktop experience. I think that Flash is actually a little bit more natural if you're trying to do that. Uh, first of all, not only in the browser, but you can deploy Flash uh, via the air runtime on your local machine. And so you have the ability to actually run Flash as a desktop application. And also it's got 99% or so market penetration when you look at all the different versions of Flash that are out there. Uh, so it's pretty much, uh, you know, if you're looking for, for developing any kind of rich internet application that goes beyond uh, HTML uh, DOM modification, it's not a bad choice to, uh, to, to use. So if you want to interact with Flex, and what Flex is, it's uh, an open source framework that is uh, deployed on a Flash platform. It's kind of analogous to what Zen Framework is to PHP, Flex is to Flash. Uh, the easiest way to do this, and at least in my opinion, is to build out a PHP class that actually implements the functionality that you want to do. And then what you do is you take that class and you wrap it in a service wrapper. That service wrapper can then uh, make available that, uh, that functionality using, using either AMF, which is the Action Message, fra uh, yeah, action message Framework, um, XML or REST, um, or you can also access it using SOAP. Inside of the Flash Player, you have access to all these individual types of service wrappers. Uh, there's a couple of additional ones that are available, but these are the ones that PHP provides um, a mechanism for.